uh, and welcome to this new session of our course. Today, or with this session, will be about the basic FICO dynamics. So, as Dr. Ehab referred to the FICO dynamic machine as a car, so you need to know how to drive it. This is ex exactly the same mo uh, model or same example we are referring to. When you, what, uh, what are you looking for when you are trying to purchase a car or to drive a car? Apart from the price, you would uh, th need to uh, think about the performance. So is this car is having the best engine and the best performance or not? Also the safety, what are the safety measures that this car could have? And finally, the time. I think that the uh, screen is cropped. Can you please check if the screen is cropped or not? The, the, the last line is not visible. OK. So this is the same concept when we are considering a FACO dynamics. This is why we are understanding FACO dynamics. You want your surgery to have a better outcome, so you want to uh, to use the less FACO power possible in order to protect the ocular structures, and you also need to have less incidence of complications. And this is what what will what uh, what is the safety means. Uh, and also you need to perform the FACO emulsification in less time. Uh, this will also decrease the amount of power inspissated into the eye. So the goal of adjusting the fecal dynamics parameter is that you need to know what is the irrigation. So these are the main parameters. The first one will be the irrigation, which is the source of flow inside the eye. And this is used to maintain the anterior chamber stable. The second parameter it is the power, which is used to emulsify the nuclear material. We need to, uh, we need to deliver efficient but sufficient also uh, uh, emulsification power in order to emulsify the nuclear matter. And finally, the third parameter will be the vacuum, which will be necessary also for holdability of the nuclear matter, and this should be efficient, but to, uh, also not too much to avoid the post-occlusion break. Talking about the basic uh, structure of the fecal dynamic machine, we have an irrigating bag. This irrigating bag is uh, hold upon a handle like this. And this will be connected to the IV line that will provide the fecal probe with the source of inflow inside the eye. So this will be giving the fluid inside the eye. And uh, uh, on the other hand, there will be another source of line, or there is another line, which is called the outflow, which will bring the amount of fluid from the eye that will uh, pass through the phaco emulsification machine, like if it is a peristaltic pump, or it is uh, uh, one of the, of the modes of phaco dynamics machine are the peristaltic pump. So there will be some rollers. These rollers will be responsible for milking of the fluid from the uh, from the eye, from the outflow line that will collect it, uh, collect this fluid into collecting bag. So the basic principle of the fake emulsification is that we need to have uh, we we have two uh, two fluid currencies. The first will be the inflow from this bag, and the other will be the outflow. So let's uh, give it the, let's uh, put this into context in a real fake emulsification machine. This is the uh, famous and the popular fa uh, ha Alcon Infinity machine. You can see what is the basic structure we have here. This is the, the fluid, the source of fluid or the source of inflow. And this is the screen showing the main parameters of the fecal emulsification. And this is the collecting bag and also uh, with the cassette and the, and the rollers. And finally, there is the foot switch. So here the, the surgeon can, can, can control the different steps of the surgery. So the basic or the basic principle of fecal emulsification is the balance. We need to have a balance. The eye is a closed chamber. So there is a source of fluid that is coming into s inside the eye, which is the inflow, and there is a also outflow from the eye. Th we need always to make the sure that the inflow is equal to the outflow or most or more preferably that the inflow will become more than of the outflow. And why do we need this? This is because w the, uh, that, uh, uh, that way we are avoiding a, m a major problem called surge that we will talk about at the end of the session. So let's start first with the first, uh, with the first parameter, which is irrigation. Irrigation, as we mentioned, it is the source of fluid that is coming to inside the eye. And this is this, this irrigation control uh, in most of the uh, of the fake machines is not uh, linear, meaning that there is no button that you are just click on it, or there is no foot pedal that you are just pressing on it that will cause linear increase in the irrigation. But mostly it is determined by the bottle height. 
some devices like Centurion, for example, have active fluidics that will can you can control the pressure of the fluid, but this is not the case in all devices. As we know, <coughs> that this source of fluid should be higher than the outflow. And why this? This is because that the uh, decreasing inflow inside the eye will have some problems. For example, like the wound burn. You know that the fecal, uh, fecal probe will, uh, is pr producing some sort of energy. This energy causing heat and this can damage the ocular structure, can cause burn of the, co of the endothelium. So the, uh, what, uh, the, the, the virtue of this irrigating fluid that it will pass, it will cool the fecal tip as it passes through the, uh, 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 beneath this sleeve, causing a cooling of this heat effect. So you may think of, okay, why wouldn't we always increase the bottle height to the maximum? And why wouldn't we uh, always increase the inflow maximum to the maximum level? This is because that the increasing the inflow more than necessary also has its hazardous effects. So we don't want a high pressure jet to flow to in enter inside the eye because that this can cause damage to ocular structure. So this sometimes when you have a high jet flow entering inside the eye, this can cause damage to the endothelium. And also you can find sometimes that the nuclear matter are repelling. They are, uh, are giving away from the, your fecal tip. And you wonder why, but the, re the, 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 the answer is that the flow, the flow is what makes the nuclear matter repulsion. Also, the, those who have myopia, especially those who have high myopia, already have high, uh, have deep anterior chamber, and this will also, if you are uh, uh, increasing the bottle height, you are uh, causing further deepening of the anterior chamber, which will make it unstable, so avoid high bottle height in myopes. The second, uh, the second parameter will be the aspiration flow rate. The aspiration flow rate is the, the, uh, is the rate of fluid removed from the eye. So as we said that there is some sort of flow inside the eye, the, 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 the counter act or the, the counter effect will be some sort of fluid that's coming out of the eye. And this aspiration flow rate will determine the speed of events that occur in the eye. Let's say that you want that everything in the eye, this is the, uh, the, the, the amount of fluid uh, uh, aspirated from the eye and you want that everything inside the eye occur by slow motion. When you want to do everything to be slow motion, what you need to do is just to decrease the aspiration flow rate. There is a misconcept that when we are uh, talking about the speed of events inside the eye and I can't find that the nuclear matter are coming toward my fecal tip, then I increase the vacuum. This is not true. And the vacuum is responsible for holdability. On the other hand, the aspiration flow rate is the, th is the, the parameter that is, that is bringing the nuclear material toward the fecal tip. So if you want everything to become faster, so you want to finish the surgery faster, then you increase the aspiration flow rate. But this is not without complications, but or no, it is not without a cost because this also can, can make uh, events, even the adverse events happen faster, like if the fecal tip attracts the posterior capsule, it will be faster, maybe more, uh, maybe faster, uh, more than the way you, are, you will be able to handle. The aspiration flow rate in case of the fecal dynamics machine uh, that's acting by peristaltic pump will be uh, based on rollers. So we said that there will be rollers that are causing a milking of the outflow tube, causing drawing of the fluid from the eye into the collecting bag. So as we, if we are increasing the aspiration flow rate, this will increase the speed of these rollers and vice versa. In some devices you might find that the aspiration flow rate uh, have some fixed control and linear control. You can find that the, this is the fixed and this is the linear. And so why do we need a fixed and why do we need linear? Sometimes when you are uh, dealing with a quadrant removal or a sculpt, this is a, we'll, we, will, uh, we need a consistent and a predictable flow attraction. Uh, on the other hand, if we like, for example, if we are epi, uh, removing the epi nucleus, this is require more control. So we need to make that it is linear. As we, uh, the more we depress, the more we get aspiration flow rate. And the less we depress, the less we get aspiration flow rate. And this will be important uh, to guard against rupture of posterior capsule. 
The third parameter will be the vacuum. So the vacuum is the negative pressure inside in the aspiration line. Meaning that like any vacuum, when you have a vacuum like the vacuum cleaner and you are cleaning your carpet, this, ca this vacuum cannot uh, 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 remove the dust from the carpet unless it is very, very close to the carpet. And this is the same thing that happens with the uh, vacuum of the FACO machine. Meaning that in order to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to build up the uh, to, uh, ultrasound power, there should be an occlusion. The, the FACO tip should be occluded by the nuclear material. And what will be responsible for this occludability? This will be the vacuum. So the vacuum will build up once there is occlusion of the FACO tip. And we don't need more vacuum than necessary. So just not to be confused about the two terms of occludability and holdability, what brings the nuclear matter to the FACO tip is the aspiration flow rate. While what makes the, uh, the, the, the FACO tip having good grip and good hold of the, fake of the nuclear matter so that it can move freely in the anterior chamber and it can, like, for example, you want to move it to in order to shop it by the second instrument, this is what is the rule of the vacuum. So the aspiration means that how quickly nuclear material is attracted to the tip, while the vacuum means that how tight is the tip holding the nuclear matter once it is occluded. There is another important pa parameter or important uh, thing about the FACO dynamics, which is the tubing. You can see here, if you are, if you are closely observing these tubes, this is the outflow tube and this is the inflow tube. You can see by in the first instance that the outflow diameter is more than the, or the inflow diameter is more than the outflow. And this is expected, as we said, we want always that the inflow becoming more than the outflow to avoid the surge. But what, uh, what, what I wanted to draw your attention to is even the thickness of the tube. You can see that the thickness of the outflow tube is more than that of the inflow. So is it on purpose? The answer is yes. Because the, the thickness of the tube will be responsible of what's called the compliance. What is meant by compliance? The compliance is just to be affected by external pressure. And we don't want the outflow to be affected by external pressure, as this will can cause what's called surge. So the problem is what's called the post occlusion break. When we have, if the, we have a, a flexible tubes or we have a, a compliant tube, this compliant tube will collapse upon the high pressure of the outflow. So the problem is not within the collapse, but after, or but after the break of the collapse. As after break of the collapse, this will cause uh, the flexible tube to swell and, uh, and remove large amount of fluid from the eye, causing loss of the pressure inside the eye and rupture of posterior capsule. So let's uh, illustrate this in more details. If we have here a FACO tip and it is occluded by the nuclear matter, what will happen if the tube is compliant, this will cause the increasing the negative pressure inside the tube and the tube will collapse. And what happens then after removing of this nuclear matter or after emulsification of this nuclear matter, this tube will expand. And this expansion of the tube will draw much more fluid from the eye causing the surge. So the surge is meaning that it is a, an event in which there is the inflow less than the outflow. And this can be uh, uh, determined by the several factors, like the tube size, as we just mentioned. We want the tube size of the outflow to be less than the inflow, and we want the tube size of the, the tubes of uh, the, uh, the aspiration to be uh, non-compliant. Also, the bottle height, if we increase the bottle height, we're increasing the inflow. And if we, uh, the, the sleeve size also, if the larger the sleeve size and it, if it is leaky, this will decrease the inflow, so it should be uh, well fit to the FACO tip. And also if we have the higher aspiration, this will increase the outflow. If we have leaky ones, this will cause outflow. To, let's just see this video where there is, a, a, you can see that there is a momentary constriction of the pupil. This momentary constriction of the pupil occurred due to the surge. There is this surgeon have, uh, has this uh, anterior chamber unstable, and this is evidenced by this momentary constriction of the pupil, leading to uh, this uh, can predispose to uh, side effects like rupture posterior capsule or damage to the corneal endothelium. Finally, the, uh, the final parameter will be the ultrasound. 
So the ultrasound is the amount of uh, is like an ultrasonic vibration that is transmitted to the fecal tip, leading to emulsification of the nuclear material. We need to know that we should use the least amount of ultrasound possible. Uh, this will avoid the damage to the intraocular structures. Another thing important about the ultrasound is that it has a repulsion effect. Sometimes when you have high excess or excess ultrasound energy and you are approximating it toward a, f a nuclear matter, this, this nuclear matter will, will be, will be uh, moving away. This is because the ultrasound has a repulsion effect or has this uh, making the nuclear matter uh, moving away. Uh, so th we need to use the least ultrasound uh, power. According to the direction of the ultrasound, we have the longitudinal or jackhammer effect, the torsional or the ozil, and the transverse or the ellipse. So what is the mechanism of action? The, the jackhammer effect, it is like a, a, longitudinal, uh, a longitudinal movement, uh, and they cause emulsification of the nuclear matter by a longitudinal movement of the tip. And this can result in excess ultrasou uh, ultrasound energy, and this, uh, and this mode will present in most of the devices. But Another mode is called the transverse ultrasound or the ellipse, wh where the fecal tip will move by horizontal movement. And the third one or the third direction will be the uh, the ozil as present in the fecal infinity, which is a torsional ultrasound, which uh, uh, which can cause shaving movement. This shaving movement will cause removal of the nuclear material, and even without the need of use of uh, longitudinal ultrasound power. According to the mode, we have different modes of the ultrasound. We have the continuous and the pulse mode and the burst mode. For the continuous mode, it, is, uh, it means that there is linear control over the ultrasound power. So the more we depress on the foot pedal to step three, the more we get of the ultrasound power. And this is uh, suitable for some FECO uh, techniques like the sculpting. But as we said, there is some shattering effect or repulsion effect of the FECO power. So this shattering effect will cause the nuclear matter to, to be moving away. And that's so that is the virtue of the FECO pulse. At the FECO pulse, there is alternating on and off periods of the FECO power, so that w the, the w this off power will cause the nuclear matter not to be uh, moving away from the FECO tip. So this will be uh, helpful in case when we are needing to emulsify the nuclear material as during the quadrant removal. The third mode is called the FECO burst, and the FECO burst there will be also alternating on and off, but the time between on and off is decreasing as we uh, increasing the depression on the foot pedal on step three. So the, the FECO power will be in pulse mode at the start, and at the end it will become uh, continuous. So this will be uh, more uh, useful for experienced surgeons where they just use one mode to handle all the steps of the surgery. So. The foot pedal is that the, the one that under your leg that you can control the steps of the uh, surgery. For the step one, you are just doing irrigation, and for step two, this is irrigation aspiration, and finally, the step three is irrigation aspiration with ultrasound. So you need to know what is the appropriate step for each, is, uh, uh, for each step of the surgery. Let's say, for example, that you are still entering in the anterior chamber. In this step, you are uh, using the step one, which is a continuous irrigation. Uh, if you are doing sculpting, then you are doing the step three, so you are pushing the foot pedal to the maximum so that you are pushing the ultrasound power to the maximum so that you can create the groove. And, uh, and th at that stage, you don't need high vacuum as you, don't, you are not attracting the nuclear material and you are not emulsifying. This is on contrary to the step three. In step three, you need to have a good grip of the nuclear matter, so you don't want repulsion or the shattering effect of the ultrasound power so that you, you are, uh, you are uh, moving between step two and step three, and you are using mainly the pulse mode. So this is a brief overview of the FECO dynamics, and uh, for the more information, I recommend you this box. It is a FECO dynamics uh, by uh, Seibel. This is a very illustrative and very informative book that will give you more information about the more details about FECO dynamics. Thank you very much.